Hello, my name is Jimmy Garrett. I'm making this video uh, by request from Holly and Miss Heather uh, to speak about my experiences as a veteran here on Veterans Day for 2021. I joined the Army when I was 17 years old uh, at, with the intent of becoming an airborne infantryman. I left high school and then 10 days later, I was at Fort Benning, Georgia, June 2001 and became an infantryman. Uh, in that time, 9-11 had happened. I had joined before that and things changed pretty quickly. Uh, we were going to war and that was a life-changing experience for as many, uh, for all of us. For me, most of all, uh, I was going to be in the fight and I knew it and it really didn't bother me that much. Uh, young and fixing for a fight and I was ready to uh, get in and get after it. Uh, I, I turned 18 and the very next day I jumped out of an airplane at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia at US Army Airborne School. Uh, I got my orders and went to the 82nd Airborne at Fort Bragg, North Carolina and I was assigned to Alpha Company 1st 325, 2nd Platoon and began to train and began to do what I really wanted to do. Uh, things that I asked, what inspired me to join? Um, I'm not really sure. I can't say it was a book or 80s action movies or I don't know what it was. There was always, I thought, a calling to uh, serve, a uh, calling to that kind of lifestyle. Uh, I wrestled and played football and to get that you know, physical fitness and that uh, type of uh, contact training. And then when they handed me a rifle and a rucksack, I, I, I couldn't have been happier. And I stayed with that lifestyle for most of them, you know, half of my life, you know, most of my adult life. And I loved it. Uh, today's Veterans Day, I had very many people text me that reached out and they are thank you. And I was joking, like, hey, don't tell nobody, but it was a lot of fun. And it was, and it, it was a blast. Um, I was 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old. Uh, run around machine guns in the woods, paint my face, uh, parachutes and rucksacks and rifles and run around the woods with the buddies and then, you know, playing, playing war, you know, it was every kid's dream. And then in um, February of uh, 2003, it got real, real fast. Uh, they issued us desert uniforms. Uh, we were snuck into the country. Um, we didn't go through the regular channels because the unit I was in, uh, not because of secrets, just because, you know, they didn't want to know where airborne or ranger units, uh, were moving at the time. And we went to Kuwait, um, trained up, did a lot of training, um, acclimated to the environment. And then on, uh, March 28, 2003, my unit crossed the border into Iraq as the invading force into Iraq. Went to Osama that's where I first saw action, um, the Battle of the Bridges, some people call it. Um, it was a necessary fight. Uh, my unit got the presidential unit citation for that. And then we moved into Fallujah. Uh, we were one of the very first units into Fallujah in April 2003. Um, we got into some pretty nasty firefights there. Uh, we were relieved and then moved on to Baghdad to continue clearing as well as establish a foothold and begin um, other combat operations as well as uh, a lot of a lot of non-combat operations. Uh, people tell me all the time, "Oh, you're just a war fighter." It's like uh, I guarded a kid's, I guarded a little girl's school in two thousand in the summer of two thousand and three, and it was so hot we couldn't wear socks or underwear or t-shirts. It was just so hot. But every single morning we woke up and um, guarded a little girl's school, or I was in the guard towers, or we were running patrols at night, and it was, it was pretty active. Um, got promoted to E4, running around, I left a weapon squad, went to a line squad, continue learning a lot more. Uh, and then I got told the surprise of my life. Uh, I re-enlisted while I was over there. Uh, I got to take, I went to war and I liked it. Uh, and you know, to me, I was like, Hey, this, this is the life I want to choose. So at 20 years old, I re-enlisted and December, 2003, I went to the E5 board and to get promoted to Sergeant. Uh, got home, paper, snafu, what have you. And at 20 years old, I was pinned and promoted to sergeant on May 1st, 2004. 
I uh, re-enlisted, uh, thought I was going to go to Hawaii, didn't want to do that. I wanted to go to another unit, so I decided to go to 10th Mountain Division in Watertown, New York, upstate New York, uh, where it snows. Ha! Nobody told me that. Uh, lots of snow, 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 snow. But it was a light fighter unit, no more jumping out of airplanes. It was just a, a light ground light fighter unit, and it was awesome. Uh, I served in Triple Deuce, um, 2nd Battalion, 22nd Infantry, 1st Brigade Combat Team out of 10th Mountain Division. And I got there, uh, I was a team leader for a couple weeks, uh, not long, and then soon I, then I got bumped up to squad leader. Uh, a lot of guys have gotten, you know, a lot of guys that outranked me, just, they didn't like the army, they didn't like Iraq, they didn't like war at all. You know, they kind of figured out, or they learned a little too late that, whoa, this is scary. And uh, they, they went home, and I met a lot of guys like that. And it was, it was, I, was, I thought it was kind of funny. People that outranked me that were just bugging out and going home. And I'm like, all right, man. Hey, dude, thank you for your service. You showed up. but um, I'm, And then I'm glad that we did, or that they, that they did. Um, and then while I was there, uh, went to pre-ranger in the Arctic snow. And then I went to a school for leadership. And I did really good there. And my first sergeant walked up to me, and he had two packets. He said, hey, in this packet... You can go to the promotion board tomorrow to become a staff sergeant. Or this packet, Sunday, you got to report to Fort Benning and go to ranger school. And I took the ranger school. And uh, just because I felt it was something that I really needed to uh, kind of brush off the fine edges or the rough edges of becoming a combat leader. And I went to ranger school, uh, had a little hiccup, um, and then I uh, graduated in October of 2005. I graduated U.S. Army Ranger School and received my Ranger tab. And then about three weeks later, I found myself in Sadr City, Iraq in 05. <laughs> and it was busy. Uh, things had drastically changed. Uh, one of the questions that I got from Miss Holly and uh, Heather, uh, equipment changes. Body armor changed, optics changed, up armor Humvees everywhere we went. When I was there initially the first time, uh, we were in light skin Humvees. It was like Mad Max. I remember just, uh, uh, acquiring bongo trucks that are just like these little Isuzu, simple little jingle trucks. Uh, I remember my squad leader uh, on patrol on a motorcycle with a sidecar. And that was, I got a picture of that. It's like one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life is my squad leader and first aren't riding around in a, uh, in a motorcycle with a sidecar. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, second tour to Iraq, I was a squad leader, uh, same, same company, Charlie Company, Triple Deuce, and served there. Um, we went on a major uh, air assault mission deep into Badlands, and I was still in E5, and uh, I briefed a medevac plan because I was an already an Army Ranger, and uh, a couple people saw that, and they saw that I was only in E5, and they didn't... Uh, I didn't like that. So I had to, I had to, I had to, uh, I was kind of forced against my will to go to the E6 board and I, I didn't want to be an E6 yet. I thought about re-enlisting, doing another job, uh, either going to be a medic or maybe something in aviation or I thought about something, doing something else. Cause I, I was like, Hey man, I just, I think I'd done quite a bit in the infantry already. You know, what else does the army have to offer? And the army and my leadership had another idea and I went to the board and I got pinned as a staff sergeant. I was 22 years old, leading the squad uh, on my second combat tour in Iraq, in Baghdad. And at this point in time, the IED threat had gone through the roof, and it was pretty bad. I finished up that tour, uh, came home, and I was like, all right, now what am I going to do? I re-enlisted again um, to stay in because I just, the Army life was for me. Uh, I loved it, digged it. Couldn't think of doing anything else. And I did that. And I was like, all right, so I'm going to go give it a try something else. So I went to a selection. I went to a selection for a, a special program. And I passed selection, got into it. I uh, got my job that I wanted. And I went through the pipeline. And that fell a little bit short. And for reasons I won't go into, but uh, it was a very hard course. And uh, I fell a little short at the end. So I went back to the infantry. And at that point in time, I got the opportunity 
Uh, I'd gotten married and uh, I had a baby boy on the way, my son Levi. See him right there. See him right there in the picture right there. Is Levi and I on the beaches of Hawaii watching the sunset. That picture right here is my squad, weapon squad, 2nd Platoon off company uh, in the 82nd, right before the invasion. Um, and then I got to go to, see it right there. Uh, that is my LERS team, long range surveillance. I got picked to be a recce team leader. I'd already been through SEER school, ranger school, shooting schools, and then I thought I'd take a crack at reconnaissance. Uh, reconnaissance was not as fun or as cool as I thought it was going to be. Uh, but I learned a lot. I learned absolutely a lot. I learned what I was kind of made of in a couple different, I, I learned this in ranger school. I learned this in Iraq. I learned this in selection. I learned this in the pipeline of the course I was in. And, but as a LERS team leader, uh, I learned a lot more of what I was made of. Um, how far will you go? For your teammates? How far will you go for your family? How hard will you push it in the rain and the cold? How much will and can you endure? Uh, I learned that uh, in the units before and at that unit as well. I uh, we went on our third tour. I went, I went back to Iraq again. I have three combat tours in Iraq. Uh, things have kind of slowed down there. I think that we would have been uh, a much better um, use of that unit uh, in Afghanistan at the time, in 2009 into 10. That was not my choice, uh, we, but we went to Iraq. Um, it was slowing down, but we were, uh, they had changed Operation Iraqi Freedom to New Dawn, Barack Obama was the president, and uh, that tour scared, scared me the most. Uh, we would go outside the wire. Um, we would, uh, air support was not, a call away like it was before. Medevac was not a call away it was before. Backup QRF was not. It was when we went outside the wire, we would sit there and huddle up. And uh, when we, we, we went on deep, 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 deep uh, out in the, out, out near the Iranian border where we were running operations. And uh, it was, we were, we would literally, we would huddle up and we, we only have each other. That's it. We've got these rifles, these handguns, these machine guns, and these trucks, and one another. That's it. No one's coming for us. No one's coming to save us. We're on our own. And that builds a different type of resiliency. That builds a different type of camaraderie. Uh, my recce team right here, um, I still stay in contact with quite a few of those guys. Uh, good dudes. Uh, my, my recce team was six guys. That's it. Six dudes. But there's several other teams. So usually I'm used to operating with about 45 guys out there. We had about 32, but we had 32 really good guys that you can trust and depend on that were highly trained, highly motivated, and they were more than ready to be out in the middle of nowhere with just one another. And we were on our own. We were, we, we were our own recovery. We were our own backup and we, all we had was one another and we were not far from Iran and uh, all the things that was going on there, a place called the Hawaza marshes. We were it. That was it. We were on our own. Uh, had some good had some good lieutenants out there, um, and uh, some good some good ranger buddies to my left and right. Um, I got picked up. I didn't really talk a whole lot about ranger school, but I went back after that combat tour as a ranger instructor. Um, I reenlisted and I got I put in a request to become a ranger instructor, and I was a ranger. I got picked up and got sent to uh, RTB. Ranger Training Brigade, and I had selected mountains, mountain phase. Um, some say it's the toughest. Uh, I thought, I loved mountain phase when I was a student. I, I loved it. I loved the area. I loved the environment. And I also understand that we, when you will, you know, look around, odds are you're going to be fighting in some mountains. And we were at the time. And I thought that's the best place that I can teach. Uh, I dug it uh, while I was there. I uh, can't really see right there. It's kind of hard. That's a ram's head. And iron that, that was pretty cool. Can't wear it, it's a weird army regulation, but I got I got my ram's head and that was pretty cool. It's when I went to basic and advanced military mountaineering. Uh, also, I was there, I went to EMT, uh, pre-hospital, first response trauma course. Um, I did a lot of medical and shooting courses. 
because I knew while I was there, I was going to get promoted to Sergeant First Class and that I was going to be a platoon sergeant. And it was still a time of war. And as an infantry platoon sergeant, those are things that you need to be able to just pull out of nowhere is medical, uh, medical training, medical ev evacuation of troops, as well as marksmanship and planning. And I excelled at that. And once again, I was in the Ranger unit and it was the absolute best and brightest. And I, I still stay very close with those guys. Uh, actually today, uh, one of my Ranger buddies from 5th RTB from Dahlonega, Georgia, where I was an instructor, he drove in today and he's gonna be staying with me for a couple days. And I'm pretty excited about that. My buddy, Mike, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, Gear had changed and evolved, body armor had gotten more advanced, but bulkier and not as good with quick releases and science. Uh, I was like, okay, cool, man. Uh, and then later on, I just started, I, I was wearing a plate carrier as I retired. It got slimmed down because you needed to, be, instead of being this mech, mech warrior, you need to be able to shoot and scoot and move quickly, which we had been saying for years. So finally somebody listened. Um, things I saw, uh, I saw sunrises. Most people haven't at certain times or certain places. Uh, I saw sunrises on the rivers of the Tigers and the Euphrates when nobody else that I went to high school with saw things in the background. There's a couple paintings of it, but I saw some sunrises on the water that on the river that nobody's you know, no, nobody saw where I'm from, you know, from my small town and, uh, or mountaintops or places in the snow or places that you have to jump in by parachute or you have to hike very far. Those are some really cool things that I saw. Um, I got to see people when I was an instructor, I got to see people at their best and I got to see people at their worst. And I got to coach, teach and mentor and mold future combat leaders. And that was a wonderful job. I loved that job. Um, I got promoted while I was there and uh, I got to the highest thing you can kind of do is there as an instructor, at, as a sergeant first class. Uh, that's what I was when I left there. I was a platoon leader, I was a PL walker and I was a level two uh, assault climber. It's kind of the things that you, uh, you know, reach to to get to. Uh, and I achieved both of those. I got promoted to Sergeant First Class. I had put in for Colorado um, and I didn't get it. Uh, it's, mm, it's pretty sad. I, th I thought I was going to get choice of duty station on the flip side of being an instructor there because it is it is extremely strenuous. Uh, it is it is one of the toughest jobs that you can is being a ranger instructor. Um, it's a great job. Loved it, but it's, it's pretty rough. Hours you're walking through the mountains with sleepy students with machine guns and explosives and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I did a lot of real world mountain rescues there with some really good guys and some things, you know, we never lost a student, but ooh, we were close, real close. Um, but I served with the best out there. The RIs at 5th RTB are the best in the business and they still are. They're still right now walking students most likely on a Thursday afternoon. It's either uh, 4.31 or uh, 4.33. <laughs> um, some guys don't know what I'm talking about on that one. But either way. Um, it was a beautiful job. I went there, left there, went to Korea in 2000. I was a sergeant first class. I was a platoon sergeant in 172 in Korea uh, in 2014. Um, they were a couple, it was pretty high tents. Uh, North South Korea were kind of shooting at each other in the waters. There's a little space in there. You look it up, but yeah, they were. It was, it was kind of rough, uh, but nothing happened. I was platoon starting up there, learned some more. Uh, got into heavier, heavy infantry, whatever. Mechanized with the Bradleys. I didn't like it. I fired a gunnery. I, I don't know. I was like, great. Ooh, I, you know, I, I didn't really get into it. I'm a light fighter. I like being on the ground as a foot soldier, running around. You know, but out there they got. Bradley, mechanized, infantry, whatever. I don't know. I didn't dig it. Um, left there, went out to California. I thought I was going to Colorado again. Didn't happen. Uh, I was supposed to be sent to Georgia. I made a deal with the Army, and I went out to... I was a platoon sergeant out in 11th ACR out in Southern California, out in Barstow, the National Training Center, and I was Op 4. I was the bad guy. And um, I had been... I was, I was the bad guy, and I excelled at that. I was good at that. Uh, I, I read about 
insurgency, counterinsurgency, guerrilla warfare. I grew up reading Vietnam books. Um, I fought insurgents and then I became the insurgent and that was pretty cool. Uh, I dug that. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, running around in jeans and a t-shirt, terrorizing the army. Uh, did a lot of shooting, more shooting, taught a lot. I was a platoon sergeant. I had four platoons while I was there. Uh, I ran the battalion scout platoon. Uh, I ran an anti-tank platoon. And then I had two infantry platoons in easy company. So I was in killer troop and then easy troop. Sorry, troops, because it's cavalry squadron. Uh, that was new too. Cav guys are weird breed of monkeys. Um, they wear boots and hats and I don't know, whatever. It was weird. I wasn't expecting it, but... Uh, uh, the it's the first time I'd met officers that I was like I was I questioned everything they said. It was kind of weird, but you know don't get too much into that. They were uh, not what I was expect not what not what I was used to. I was used to uh, first round draft picks, and then all of a sudden I'm with some dudes that I think may might they would get cut from the JV team. Uh, these are lieutenant colonels and majors that I thought were not as good as I was expecting. But I drove on. I had, I had, a, I had a really good company commander. Um, and uh, yeah, dug that. Um, over the years, I pushed it really hard. And after a while, my body caught up with me. Uh, and I had received word that I was expected to make the master sergeant list to be promoted to E8. And then I had a medical appointment. And while I was in that medical appointment, the PA is like, you're going home. And I was told that I was going to be medically retiring at 16 years because uh, I had pushed it pretty hard for those 15 years. Um, through about six months, I got out, retired in August 1st, 2017. I came home. Um, my wife at the time and kids were living in this house um, here in Prescott, Arizona. And I came home. And I became a dad, full-time dad, and I loved it. Uh, not long after that, things with my spouse were not jiving, and we decided to separate. I think that's the nicest way I can put it. <laughs> uh, and now I'm a full-time dad. I have my kids 99% of the time. I take my daughter to soccer practice. Uh, I'm also a college student. I wanted to be a pilot in the Army. I uh, didn't get the opportunity, so now I'm a pilot now. Uh, I have my private pilot's license in uh, single-engine aircraft, and also I am instrument rated. Uh, soon I will be going for my commercial license, single-engine commercial license, and multi-engine commercial license, and then I will hopefully be a CFI and CWI, CFWI, um, to be a flight instructor, and then I'll see what the world takes me. Uh, but my kids are 10 and 10 and 12. My son is 12. My daughter's 10. Uh, they keep me pretty busy. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can't see, really see my hat, but it says Just In Case Emergency Prep. Uh, that is a company that I'm a part of. Um, they're out of Dahlonega, Georgia. One of my Ranger buddies is the CEO and founder of that company. And we do uh, emergency preparations, uh, medical training, and provide people the equipment that they potentially may need and the training to uh, get themselves out of bad situations, uh, be their own self-recovery, be their own quick reaction force. Because uh, in this day and age, uh, I, we feel that it's something that we can provide uh, to the public. Um, that's about it that all I can think of to keep it under 25 minutes as Miss Heather has requested. Um, I'm gonna post this on the internet, and, or sorry, YouTube, and hopefully you all view it. Uh, my name is Jimmy Garrett. I'm a retired Sergeant First Class Airborne Ranger out here in Prescott, Arizona. And like I say to a lot of people, keep around in the chamber and Rangers lead the way.